YouTube, it's Reggie, and let's get into the word. So today it says, we're on Revelation 17, it says, And there came one of the seven angels that has the seven bowls and spake on with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and they that dwell in the earth were made drunken with her wine of fornication. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names and blasphemies, having seven heads and ten horns. So, one, I want to say with this, I think a lot of people overlook the seriousness of this. God always refers back to fornication as one of the sins that he hates like the most. And this is a sin I struggle with. But the more I read the Bible, the more I see that God calls out fornication so much because it's premarital sex and it's not in his will for your life. And it's, it's because of the negative consequences of it. Fornication can lead to so much negative stuff in your life because you, one, you get obsessed with having sex, which is I've been there, done that. It's not a good feeling because then you start relying on that for your happiness, which is bad. Two, you can't tell when people want you for your body or when they want you for sex. You can't tell that that sucks. The third thing is, too, you're losing your a piece of that your soul every time you do that. And I, I'm not going by the soul ties or nothing like that. I'm talking about physically, like, your energy, bro. Like, every time you, you know what I'm saying, release that, you're losing it. Like, and there's so much power in that. And the more... I've been just celibate and not worried about that. The more my head's been clear. I feel like when you lose that energy, your head has more, like, I mean, your mind has more gateways for Satan to just come in and work because you're already desiring that. Your flesh desires that. And since you've been feeding your flesh, it's so strong in your mind, that desire. So to get away from that desire, you need to go to God and fill that void with God because God is the filler of that void. We see is the creator of us and we need him. Okay, and it says having names of blasphemy because every time you turn away into this fornication, you're blaspheming against God, essentially, because you're saying, hey, God, I know your truth, but this is what I'm choosing to do. So you're choosing to sin over God. Hey, right. And this lady is not only doing that herself, she's promoting it. So but that's blaspheming against God at that point, because you're promoting something that goes against God and you're heavily doing it to the point where you're influencing other people to turn away from God. That's why no matter your convictions, you should keep those to yourself unless someone asks you. Because if you're spreading certain convictions, one conviction for you might not be the same conviction to another person. Like they might have different viewpoints. And now you're creating separation when it's not needed. When if that person asks you about it, y'all could talk about it, have that hard talk or whatever. But if it's not, why just bring it up and create divert, die, like, I guess, buddy heads for no reason. And it says, and a woman that was arrayed in purple and scarlet, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a, cold, a golden cup full of abomination, even the unclean things of her unforgation. And upon her forehead a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and of the abominations of earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of murderers of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with a great wonder. So this woman is content with being living in sin. She's promoting abominations and is you're seeing on her forehead mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of earth. So she knows what she's doing. She's she's just like saying, they know the truth, but they are choosing to follow their way. And Satan doesn't tell us to follow his way, he says follow your own way. Because when you follow your own way, you're pulling away from God. You're idolizing yourself. So anything that you're idolizing, you need to cut off. It says in your Bible, if your right hand's causing you to sin, cut it off. Because sinning is bad because it brings you away from God. Even though the power of sin has been defeated on the cross, we don't go on living in the sin because we're abusing the grace that God gives us when we fall in this sin. See, lock in. Like when you understand that, you understand why he says not to do that. And it says, and the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou wonder? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which have the seven heads and the ten horns. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and is not about to come out of the abyss and to go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. They whose name have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast, how that he was and is not, shall come. Here is the mind that have wisdom. The seven heads are seven mounts on which the woman sitteth. 
And they are seven kings. The five are fallen. The one is, the other is not yet to come. And when he cometh, he must continue a little while. And the beast that was is not, is himself also an eighth, and is of the seventh. He goes into perdition. And the ten horns that thou sawest are ten kings, who have not received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority as kings and with the beast for one hour. So they're, God's going to give them their, what they want, that instant gratification to be a king of everything. But it only lasts for an hour because they're going to hell. But God wants everyone to, it's going to basically be a grand test of your faith. Because there's going to be a beast. There's going to be an antichrist. There's going to be uh, angels that come from heaven to show the power of God. And they're going to die. And when they die, everyone's going to think like God's been defeated. That these people that had all this power were defeated by the beast. How can we overcome it? God. But a lot of people are going to start doubting God during this time instead of sticking it out. And God's telling us this, that he says, even with the wrath, a lot of people will refuse to repent and turn away. That's why they're condemned to hell because their hearts have been hardened so much that even with the wrath, the coming wrath that they're seeing and experiencing, they still can't turn to God because they don't feel like they need God. Even in this time, they will blaspheme against God. They will worship these kings. They will worship all these things that aren't of God instead of worshiping the one true living God. And it says, for one hour, these have one mind and they give their power and authority unto the beast. So one, one accord. God tells us as believers in Christ, we are one body, one, one accord. That's why it says, do not defile the body. Like when you commit fornication, you are defiling the body, a body of Christ. Because other people are seeing you do that and thinking it's okay to do when it's not. So that's why it's so much importance on that. But the same way we live on one accord, Satan lives on one accord. He has one agenda. Bring as many people away from God as possible. That is his goal. So everyone we see in this, the harlot, we see the um, kings, we see the beast, we see Satan in this, the dragon. All they are on one accord trying to get us to fall into sin so that they can take us away from God. But when you know this, and this is why God's revealing this to us, he says, blesses those that read and blesses those that hear. So we're both blessed by me say reading it and you hearing it. We know that these events are going to unfold. So this is the time when we stand on our faith, no matter what, the good, the bad, the ugly, the pain. The, because we know that one day we will be clothed in white. One day we will be rose to heaven. One day we will live with our creator for eternity. That we will walk the streets of gold with our creator. That's, that's the goal. That's what I'm looking forward to. So I'm not worried about any of this rap because I know how to be saved, which is by putting your faith in Jesus and letting your life reflect it. Because it says, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. So if you love God, you'll follow his commandments. And it says, sorry, it went up a little bit. Bro. Bro. Why did it do that? My bad, y'all. I don't know why I skipped like that. Uh, I think we're on like 11. Okay. All right. Bro. Okay. It says, These have one mind and they give their power and authority unto the beast. These shall war against the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords, the kings and king of kings. And they shall also overcome that are with him called chosen and faithful. So it tells us that Jesus is going to win the battle. And that because we are on one accord and we are a part of the family of God, that we will also overcome that are with him called chosen and faithful. We are chosen by God to receive the freely given gift of salvation. Because on that cross, he died for everyone. Whether you believed in him, whether you hated him, whether you didn't know him, he died for you so you have a chance to be saved by putting your faith in him. And it says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the harlot sitteth, are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten peep horns which thou sawest, and the beasts, they shall hate the harlot, and they shall make her desolate and naked, and they shall eat her flesh, and shall burn her utterly with fire. So she's getting her punishment on this earth before she goes to hell. God says she's going to... She's going to be desolate, naked, and shall eat her flesh. The beast will eat her flesh, and she shall burn utterly with fire. So that's how she's going to die. Then she goes to hell without the creator, because she wanted to worship these abominations and turn away from God, even though he's a one true living God that wants a relationship with you. And when you have that relationship, you can follow God's will for you. It's so simple, but Satan likes to tell us that we're too far gone. 
But God says, there's no one too far gone that only through me will you enter heaven. He says he is the truth, the way and the life. The lamb, Jesus Christ says that. If Lord Jesus says it, why do you not believe it? He's never lied. The, the Bible is the only book to ever go 100%. Never disproved because God does not cap. Doesn't. And it says, for God did not put in their hearts to do this to his, to his mind and to come to one mind and to give their kingdom unto the beast. And so the words of God shall be accomplished. Hold on. Let me close this. And right there it tells us, God does not put in our heart to go worship Satan, to go worship these things of this world. God says to follow me, follow my commandments, and you will be made. I will acknowledge me in all your ways. I can make your path straight. He's telling us, if you go to me, I can make your path straight. But when you go to these worldly things, you will lose everything because that is not of me and that those things will fade away. That's why he says not to value those things. Another thing he says is that wrath is coming. For those that don't put their faith in Jesus, simply putting your faith in Jesus saves you from all this wrath. That's why we need to seek Jesus today. Every day you wake up, every day God blesses you with life. You have another day to repent, turn away from your sins. Repentance is more than a change of a thought, change of a mind. It's a change of lifestyle. You change how you live because you love God more than your sin. That is what it means to truly repent. It's changing how you live. If your life does not look different before you found God to after you found God, have you truly repented? Have you truly turned away from your sin? No, you have not. Your life should be different. It should show that you're a Christian. Your wor words should not be the only thing that show you love God. Your actions should show. You should be a cheerful giver. You should love everyone as thyself. You should respect everyone. You should show love to everyone the way Christ shows love to us unconditional. He forgives us. Every time we fall short, he forgives us again. He says, get up and walk with me. I fall short. God picks me back up. Come on, Reginald. Let's keep walking. That is what love is. We got to stop having additional love for people. Oh, I love them while they're helping me. When they fall short, I hate them. God doesn't do that. So why are you doing that to other people? It says those who judge will be judged according to their criteria that they judge that's a paraphrase but however you judge you'll be judged according to that so if you judge people based on their appearance you'll be judged on your appearance if you judge people based on their actions you're going to be judged on your actions the same way god tells us if you love me you'll follow my commandments so if your actions reflect that you follow satan what would make you think that jesus is going to let you in the kingdom of heaven you say lord lord it says not everyone that says lord lord will be entered will enter into heaven it's easy to say, Lord, 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 you're my savior. I love you. But then I'm, I'm going to have fornicate. And that's that's for me. I used to do that. I used to say I love God and then go and commit sins intentionally. And that showed my lack of love for God. And he convicted me of that and told me, hey, Reg, if you truly love me, you'll turn away from that. And what did I do? I turned away from it and my life's never been better. And every day I get on here and let you know how you can be saved. Simply putting your faith in Jesus saves you. It says, for God did not put in their hearts to do this, his mind. They're not, he's not saying to follow Satan. He says, repent, turn away from your sins and live for him. It says, and a woman who thou sawest in a great city, which reigned over the kings of the earth, she's gone because she didn't want to put her faith in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus. Every time he gives you life, there's a chance to repent. Change your lifestyle. Seek God today. I love you, but God loves you more. God bless you.